To be controversial means to basically get a rise out of someone, to be involved in the public eye so much that you become a public disagreement. And throughout NHL history, there's been a handful of controversial moments that have occurred, thus ruining the reputations of those who created them. Examples being McSorley's stick swing and Todd Bertuzzi's hit to Steve Moore. But those players are only controversial for one or two singular moments. When looking at who the most controversial player of all time is, only one name can and really did come to mind. That being Sean Avery. The dude is notorious for starting trouble, bitter rivalries, and constantly being involved in the press, causing so much chaos on the ice that the NHL had to enforce a new rule just to attempt to stop Avery's shenanigans. And even once he hung up the skates, he was still actively causing trouble online. Avery has so many moments, chirps, and allegations that trying to cover them all would be impossible. So, I made the Sean Avery timeline. This will better structure today's video. The timeline's goal is to highlight the most important controversies that Avery's been involved in, all while showcasing what type of a person and player Avery was during his time in the league. Our timeline starts off in 2005, where the tip of the iceberg begins to form. But before we get there, let's talk about Avery's rise to fame. Avery would sign in Detroit as an unsigned free agent in 2001, and after moving in with teammate Brett Hull, Avery would begin picking up on some of Hull's traits. No, not his knack for finding the back of the net, or even his hammer of a shot. Instead, Avery would pick up on Brett Hull's loud mouth. Hull was often not afraid to speak his mind, but Avery would take things to the next level for the vast majority of his career. Starting in 2001, Avery would take the time to call out a few players, including calling Paul Correa a diver, Andy McDonald an arrogant midget, and Shane Doan the NHL's most overrated player. He would get shipped off to the LA Kings in 2003 for Matthew Schneider, and this would also be the time where Avery would date Elijah Cuthbert, who we'll get to later. After the the lockout, the 2005 season was set to begin. We'll start off 2005 with a bang, and perhaps his most notable moment from that season. After the lockout and his beef with the NHLPA, Avery, in an attempt to stick up for teammate Jeremy Roenick, decided to take his frustration to the media. In a response to Coyotes defenseman Denise Goche, Avery would infamously state, Certainly a clean hit. I think it was typical of most French guys in our league with a visor on that, you know, run around and play tough and can't back anything up. But, you know, it was a clean hit, whatever. This didn't go well with the French Canadian public at all, causing Avery to eventually apologize. But less than a month later, Avery would be accused of calling Edmonton's George Larac a monkey. Avery denied the allegations, and there was no evidence to prove it to be real or fake. But this was alarming, as in a span of two months, Avery would be in the spotlight twice for all the wrong reasons, and it would only continue to get worse. A month after the Larac incident, Avery would get fined $1,000 for diving in a game versus the Phoenix Coyotes, and in total disbelief, Avery would state, quote, how can a guy sitting in an office determine if you dived by watching a tape? No question that is a way to do something to me. The league would respond by doing something else to Avery, giving him another thousand dollar fine. Now, we head to 2006, where Avery would frustrate King's management to the point where they would let him go. First, Avery starts off with a bang. In April of 2006, he would get into a heated argument with former Habs netminder and Ducks commentator Brian Hayward thanks to Hayward's on-air comments in which he stated that Avery tried to avoid fighting Ducks player Todd Fedoruk. Sean would call him a quote, embarrassment, terrible announcer, and player, to which Hayward would respond by stating, how would you know? When I was playing, you were in your third year 
year of eighth grade. Ouch. Sean was also said to have bullied teammate Dustin Brown, mocking him for his lisp, but other teammates said that Avery not just mocked his lisp, but also mocked his girlfriend, claiming that she wasn't glamorous enough. What really drove the Kings away, however, was when Avery, at practice, would run in with assistant coach Mark Hardy. This caused LA to suspend Avery, and in September of 2007, he would get shipped off to the New York Rangers. And this is where many get to experience peak Sean Avery, and his intense rivalry with the New Jersey Devils. Avery specifically had a rivalry with two players, the first being enforcer David Clarkson, and most notably, Hall of Fame netminder Martin Brodeur. Not many players could rattle Marty, but no one did it better than Avery. To wrap up the 2007 season, the soon-to-be foes would get involved in their first incident, where Avery would face a discipline hearing after taunting both Brodeur and Clarkson. This was also around the same time where Toronto Radio would accuse Avery of making cancer-related comments to then-recently-diagnosed Jason Blake during an altercation between Sean, Blake, and Tucker. Avery would go out and state publicly, quote, I'm extremely upset and hurt that false and damaging comments were attributed to me regarding Jason Blake. I made no such comments. Things would get quiet up until 2008, where in the playoffs, Sean Avery would cement himself in NHL history. Dottie Gomez in the ring. Yager again, walking. Shooting one wide of Brodeur. Sean Avery's tactics at screening the goaltender like nothing I've ever seen before. During the first round of the 2008 playoffs, Avery made history, as this attempt to screen and distract rival Martin Brodeur would cause the NHL to take immediate action. Avery would plant himself in front of Brodeur and wave his stick around trying to distract Brodeur, thus letting his guard down. Funny enough, it actually worked, as less than a minute later, Avery would score on Marty thanks to tricking the goaltender into thinking he would, once again, wave his stick. The NHL, less than 24 hours later, would create what's now known as the Sean Avery Rule. A rule that states, quote, an unsportsmanlike conduct minor penalty will be applied to a situation when an offensive player positions himself facing the opposition goaltender and engages in actions such as waving his arms or stick in front of the goaltender tender's face with purpose of interfering with or distracting the goaltender. Now, with most controversial players, they'll sometimes feel remorseful about most of their actions, but with Avery, sometimes he didn't care. As days later, Avery would get spotted at practice, jokingly simulating the stick wave, politely flipping the camera off once he caught the cameraman. Avery's Rangers would win the series, causing another iconic moment to occur. As when both teams approached and went through the handshake line, Brodor wouldn't shake Avery's hand. This later caused Avery to stay in an interview. Well, everyone talks about how classy, uh unclassy I am and fatso there just forgot to shake my hand I guess so <laughs> Once the playoffs were over, Avery would sign a four-year deal with the Dallas Stars, and ends 2008 in one of the most memorable moments of Avery's career. He would have two notable interviews, both involving the Calgary Flames. Avery would state that Aginla was boring and bad for the league's image. That quote often gets overshadowed, however, as this next one takes the cake. Two months after the Aginla statement, Flames defenseman Dion Phaneuf would date Elijah Cuthbert. Avery Avery's former girlfriend, causing Avery to state, Good to be back in Calgary, I love Canada. And I just wanted to comment on how it's become like a common thing in the NHL for guys to fall in love with my sloppy seconds. Within hours, he would get suspended again, and this interview would actually cause a lot of harm to Avery's image. He would agree to undergo anger management counseling, and multiple people within the Stars organization, including Mike Medano and head coach Dave Tippett, stated that they would refuse to take him back onto the team. Because of all this, the Stars put Avery on waivers, and he would get claimed by his former team, the New York Rangers, where he would eventually end his career. Then, 
from 2009 up until his retirement in 2012 all seemed silent as Avery began to struggle to stay in the league. He would get placed on waivers several times going up and down from the AHL and NHL and in typical Avery fashion he would announce his retirement on Watch What Happens Live with host Andy Cohen getting to be in the public eye for one last time. So we thought. As our timeline doesn't end here. Once Sean retired he was still very active online and fired on all cylinders including feuding with his former head coach John Tortorella as almost a year after his retirement he would take to Twitter tweeting quote fire this clown his players hate him and won't play for his BS this coming after the Rangers would lose their second consecutive shootout eventually he would get his wish as after a semifinals loss to the Bruins Tortorella would get the boot with Avery claiming he had a huge smile on his face after finding out that he was fired. I should also mention Avery's appearance on Dancing with the Stars in 2014, as an old foe took one last jab at him online, that being Marty Brodeur, who stated that Avery made a fool of himself while on the show. Sean responded the only way he knew, with this tweet and the hashtag Fatso. Sean Avery was at one point the NHL's biggest pesk. He did anything he could to be under the spotlight and said whatever he needed to get under the skin of his opponents. Some say he played a character, one that made Avery who he was on the ice, while others believe that's just the way he really is as a person. Regardless, there's no denying how controversial of a figure Sean Avery really was, and whenever he did something on the ice, you knew it would get talked about the next day. 